Hey everyone! In this video, we're going to look at some techniques to debug a Flipper Zero application. I recommend you first watch my videos on setting up your development environment and the video on debugging Frui assert failures that walks through how to set up the hardware. I'm using Roguemaster firmware, which comes with a tool called Notes for FZ WIP, which is what we'll be debugging today. I assume WIP stands for Work in Progress, so hopefully we can find some bugs. Let's get started. So for my setup, I have my Flipper Zero going into a USB hub, and then I have the three pins, ground, IO, and clock connecting into my debugger. And then my debugger is also going into the USB hub. On my Discord channel, I'll be doing some giveaways with some of these little debuggers. Um, and then I have directions, again, in that debugging for assert failures, on how to make your own. Okay, again, I'm on the Roguemaster firmware, and the application we're debugging is under Applications, External, and then Notes for FZ. And it's called Notes for FZ WIP, and it's found under the Tools. So that's our main application, main.c. I'm gonna go ahead and pin that. I'm going to do a control shift B and then launch app on Flipper. For me on Roadmaster, it doesn't seem to launch applications. It just loads this application menu. Um, but if it does launch the application or if it launches the menu, you're going to want to press back until you've exited out of the application. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and go into our run and debug window and then choose Attach Firmware Black Magic, and then press the Go button. Okay, so our debugger is attached. I'm gonna hit Continue. And then I'm going to launch our application. And you can see that we're at this Asimvolatile Breakpoint Zero. And at this point, you're able to set breakpoints in your own code. Okay, so it didn't let me actually set a breakpoint on line seven, probably because of some optimizations going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into definition of that method and set a breakpoint here on that first line. And then we'll go ahead and say continue. Okay, so we can see that we are calling memory alloc for our structure. So we'll go ahead and step over that command. Interesting. So we bounced back into it without continuing. So there's probably some weird optimization. So I'm going to go ahead and say step into at this point. Yeah, and we're back there. So that's kind of weird. Um, step over. And now we're debugging. So now we're going to set the number of notes as zero. And then our app notes is a char star star, so a pointer of pointers. And we're going to malloc some space for those. The number of notes uh, is set to 10 or it's set to something. Um, could have been defined somewhere else. Let's go ahead and step into that code. And we can see our size is 1,200, which is really big um, for, for 10 notes. That doesn't quite add up. So let's go ahead and step out of that. Um, and so the size of the char star, the size of that is probably a pointer, which is about four. And then our notes is 10. So that would be 40. And then we multiplied it by the max length of a note by 30. I don't think, I think that's a bug. I don't think we need to do that. Um, but we're going to keep that code there for now. And then let's see what else happens. And then we're looping through those notes. And for each index, we're going to allocate the max length of a note times a character. So let's go ahead and step into that. And this time we see that size is 30 and the char is one byte. So that makes sense. So 30 bytes. OK, 
Okay. And we're going through those eyes. Okay, and so we only allocated uh, apps notes zero through nine. And so this definitely should have been the number of notes times the size of that pointer. And we don't need to do this multiply by max length of note. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and say continue and that'll just start running our app. Um, let's see what happens. There we go. So now we have add new note and list your notes. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add a note. We'll add a second note. And then we'll go to list our notes. Great, so we can see note zero was QWER and note one was ASDF. Um, I don't know if these should be, if we should add one to those so they're like number one and number two. That depends on what your design is, I guess. Okay, so the back button. Okay, and so none of the navigation is working at this point. Text input. List of notes, that's what we're in. Okay. So I set three breakpoints on the on event and on enters for the current scene that we're in. Go ahead and press left. Okay, and when we do press the back button, we end up in list of notes on event. And this code is returning one. And over in our call stack, we can see who's calling this method. Um, this is a callback method, so we can actually walk into the framework code. Let's go ahead and do that. So for here, we can see that they're setting consumed to be our on event handler that's where it's getting returned. So we'll go ahead and, and then we have, if not consumed, go to the previous scene, otherwise return consumed. And then if we return it, if it's false, they're gonna call stop and exit, but we're returning true, so they're not. Okay, so it looks like what you're supposed to do is return a zero here, not a one. Um, so let's go ahead and step over that. And now we're at that if not consumed. We can see consumed is true. For now, I'll just walk through what it's doing. So we're going to say it doesn't make that call and it's still going to return true. And then it's discarding the key sequence. Okay, we're going to go ahead and press it one more time and we'll step out. And again, consumed is true. This time we're going to change it to say false. Okay, it doesn't let me type in the word false. So let's use zero as the value for false. And it now says consumed is false. So now we're going to go ahead and step over. And now you can see we're calling scene manager previous scene. And I'm going to go ahead and just continue. And now we're on our on leave code. And for some reason, Q flipper is not synchronized. Um, but there you go. And so now we're back to the main menu. So we're going to want to change this code to be a zero on line 174. So let's go ahead and make that change. So I'm going to disconnect and then in Q Flipper, I'm going to exit. Oh, that's interesting. We kind of got stuck there for a little bit. We're going to say return a zero. Exit all the way out. 
Control Shift B, launch app on Flipper. If it launches or doesn't launch, keep pressing the back button until you're back to the main screen. Go ahead and do our attached firmware. And then go ahead and launch the application. And now we can set our breakpoints. So we'll go ahead and toggle one of those breakpoints and we'll hit continue. Add our note. Add our second note. List our notes. We're in our breakpoint here, walking through, setting up our on enter. There's our notes. Press the back button. We're on our breakpoint for our on event, returning a zero. And we're in our on leave code. And now we're back to that main menu. So now when we press back, we would expect it to exit the app, but instead it's asking us to write our notes down and write our notes down and then it exits. So we'll go ahead and launch the application again. And then we can, our breakpoints in this case were already set, so that's good. Say so continue. We're gonna go ahead and add a new note. But before I say okay, we wanna go to the notes text input and go ahead and look at what's happening here. So now I'm going to say save. So we're saving and it's checking to see if we had a custom event called save event, which we do. Okay. Um, breakpoints can be tricky. Maybe we didn't have one there. Let's go ahead and set breakpoints uh, a couple of places. Okay, and we'll try adding another note. Okay, and so this time we can see that they are calling scene manager with the next scene passing that main menu so if we go ahead and we step into that we can see that it is seeing if it's not the first scene it's getting our current scene calling its exit handler if it has one, and then it's pushing back into the stack our next scene ID, which is that main menu. So what we want to do instead is go ahead and go over to Explorer, and we want to use a public API, so we're going to use scenemanager.h, and you can see that there's scene manager search and switch to another scene you can use that takes a scene in the scene ID, switch to a previous scene, one of that takes a list, switch to previous scene that takes the ID of the scene, or just previous scene that would go to the previous scene that you were on. Um, we could use previous scene, but I think that using search and switch to a previous scene makes the code a little more explicit that we're trying to go back to that main menu. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll stop debugging. And then we'll go ahead and close QFlipper. We'll do Control Shift B and launch app on Flipper.
and then keep pressing back until you're back to the main menu. At this point, we can go ahead and launch our debugger. Let me go ahead and reboot my debugger. Something happened. There we go. And we're in our debugger. We'll hit continue. And then over in QFlipper, we'll go into applications. Tools, notes for FC. Go ahead and set a breakpoint. Hit continue. Add our note. Okay. We're just debugging. That's fine. Add a second note. Okay. And we'll go to list your notes. There's our notes. We'll press the back button. And we're returning zero instead of one. We're back to the main menu, and then we'll press the back button again, and this time the application exited. All right, so we looked at three different issues. One was where we were accidentally multiplying this by the extra size, so we could remove that size. Um, and then we had one where instead of calling next scene, we switched it to search and switch to previous scene. And then we had one where our on event um, for that navigation returns a zero now instead of a one. In a future video, we can look at what happens when you pass in that 11th note. Um, it passes in a invalid buffer. And basically I tried to make a video debugging that and it took about 25 minutes for just that segment. Um, so I think it's going to have to be its own video. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe. And again, go ahead and join that Discord. I'll be doing a giveaway on a couple of these debugging modules for you. And if you have any other questions, also the Discord's a great place to reach out. A lot of people reach out with different applications. They need help uh, troubleshooting. Hope you have a great day. Thanks a lot.